do you remember that scene from Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, when Indy has to cross this chasm and there is no way across, but he has to get across because there's no going back. Um, and so he's standing there trying to work out what to do. And then it occurs to him that this quest is asking of him a leap of faith. So he steps out into thin air and his foot comes down on a bridge. The bridge had been there all along, but he had not been able to see it. Now that scene, like so much of modern literature, was inspired by the 19th century author George MacDonald. In, in this case, it was one of his children's books called The Princess and Curdie. Curdie is a young miner who has just begun to trust the magical princess. He had run to her for help and knocked on her door and she called out to him to come in. But when he opened the door, all he could see was the night sky, just full of stars. But no floor, no walls, no roof, not even the ground below. So he stood there, hesitating for a while, not knowing what to do. But as I said, he had begun to trust the princess. And, and didn't want to demonstrate a lack of trust now. And he knew that if he was to just kind of stick his foot tentatively into the room and feel for a floor, uh, that would indicate that he didn't trust her. And he wasn't willing to do that. So instead, he walked confidently into the room and his foot came down on a solid floor and the stars spinning around resolved themselves into a spinning wheel, the princess's spinning wheel. And uh, he was able to ask her for help and he got the help he needed. I am the way, the truth and the life, said Jesus. When God calls us to move forward and there just doesn't seem to be a forward, when there just doesn't seem to be a way, Jesus is the way. Jesus was the way for Stephen in our reading from Acts. When he faced a crowd of people about to pelt him with stones, he had reached the end of the road. There was no way forward for him. But he looked up and there was Jesus at the right hand of God. And so Stephen died following the way of Jesus with prayers on his lips, just like the ones Jesus prayed from the cross. And so he gave up his spirit and prayed, Lord, do not hold this against them. Just as Jesus had prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. There was no way. But Stephen knew that Jesus is the way. So he followed Jesus all the way to the right hand of the Father. When Jesus says that he is the way, the truth and the life, some people try to make that into a negative statement rather than a positive one. Into a box to define who is in and who is out. Especially who is out. When Jesus said no one comes to the Father except through me, that is sometimes read to mean that only people who have certain specific beliefs about Jesus can get to the Father and everyone else is excluded. Now some are excluded because they haven't heard about Jesus. Some are because the message they have heard makes no sense to them or because the Christians they've observed speaking this message have completely put them off Jesus. Some are excluded because they've been told that something about themselves makes them fundamentally unworthy. That this is how this beautiful passage is sometimes read. But Jesus is saying pretty much the opposite of that. He is saying, trust me, I will bring you to the presence of God the Father. <coughs> Excuse me. Take one step 
in the direction of the Father and I will be the path that takes you all the way there. There may not seem to be a way, but trust me, I am the way. In the bit just before today's reading in John, Jesus had told Peter that he will deny him three times before the rooster crows. <coughs> but don't worry, Jesus says, trust me. There's room for everyone in my father's house and by going to the cross, I am preparing a place for you. Even a place for you all, even for those who've let me down. Even for those who deny me multiple times, it's okay. I am the way and I'll make sure you get there. Thomas and Philip ask anxious questions because they've picked up on the importance of this conversation and they, they know they need to understand it, but they can't understand it. We've all been there. And Jesus says, don't worry, trust me. There's room for everyone in my father's house, even for those who get confused. It's okay. You don't get there by being certain. You don't get there by having all the answers. You'll get there because I will make sure you get there. Because I and the Father are one. The Father is in me and I am in the Father. Trust me, I've got this. It's okay to be confused. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to doubt because the truth is not about some set of abstract concepts that you have to force yourself to believe. Jesus is the truth. The truth is a person. So the truth is found in relationship. We meet Paul or Saul for the first time uh, in today's Acts passage. He's a young man who is zealous for the truth, so zealous and so certain that he has that, that he has a hold on the truth that he approved and supported the killing of Stephen. Stephen deserved to die as far as Paul and his companions felt, because Stephen told the story of their common ancestors in a way that led to a different climax from the one Paul was used to looking for. Paul was so zealous for the truth that he obtained the authority to travel around disciplining anyone uh, found to be a follower of the way. And as he walked that path, zealously living out the truth he believed, Jesus met him on the road, because Jesus is the way, and gave him the blessing of temporary blindness. And that blindness allowed him, at last, to loosen his grip on certainty enough to let real truth, that is Jesus, enter into his life. Certainty of being right is the surest way to keep the truth at a safe distance. Those things that bring doubt into our lives, things like, like grief, like disappointment, like failure, now they're really uncomfortable, but they can be our domestic, a Damascus road, Damascus road experiences that bring us with open hands and open minds into the presence of true truth. Now, I mentioned George MacDonald earlier. When one of his readers uh, wrote to him complaining about his habit of questioning Christian orthodoxy, his reply included these words. With all sorts of doubt, I am familiar. And the result of them is has been and will be a widening of my heart and soul and mind to greater glories of the truth. The truth that is in Jesus and not in Calvin or Luther or St. Paul or St. John, save as they got it from him, from whom every simple heart may have it and can alone get it. Doubt is the hammer that breaks the windows clouded with human fancies and lets in the pure light. 
I'll repeat that last bit. Doubt is the hammer that breaks the windows clouded with human fancies and lets in the pure light. If Jesus is the truth, we do not need to be afraid to ask questions. All truth will lead us to Jesus. There is a movement in churches around the world at the moment toward doctrinal rigidity. A movement based on fear that God will punish anyone who holds a belief that is not utterly pure. This fear, seen most clearly in the US but definitely in Australia too, leads people to restrict books that children can read, not based on age appropriateness but based on strict boundaries around how and what children can be allowed to imagine. This fear leads to parents discouraging young people from pursuing a broad education. This fear prevents adults from even sitting in the same room with people they disagree with, just in case hearing a contrary opinion might pollute their own doctrinal purity, which is their only assurance of salvation. You just you have to feel compassion for such people. The tragedy is that when we restrict access to the truth, we are restricting access to Jesus because Jesus is the truth. Wherever truth is to be found, there is Jesus. This dark, rigid thinking has not only taken hold in the Anglican Church, it is to be found in all religions and communities at the moment. And it would be easy to give in to the fear that is driving it. Because we're not immune to that fear either. It would be so easy to fight their dark rigidity with a dark rigidity of our own, with our own doctrinal purity. But we don't do that. We pray for those lost in the darkness. And we keep a light burning to welcome them home when they are ready. And perhaps we leave some hammers lying around <laughs> that they might use to smash those clouded windows of their own. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So we keep on walking, we keep on questioning, and we keep on living. Jesus was born and went to the cross in order to defeat the forces of death and destruction and bring life to the world. And Jesus says that those who follow him will do the same, and even more because he will work through us. Back in John 7, Jesus had said that if we are thirsty, we can come to him and he will not only give us living water to satisfy our own thirst, but will make each of us into a fountain of living water that brings life to others. Jesus came to give life. And through those who follow him to bring more and more and more life into the world, flowing out further and further and deeper and deeper. And that is what we want, isn't it? To live our lives in a way that is life-giving for the people around us. Jesus says if you ask him to do that, he will. So... I should add that Jesus rarely gives us what we ask in quite the way we expect. But can you picture St Paul's as this great fountain pouring out life and water in all directions into Ashgrove and beyond? And each of us, as each of us receives life from Jesus and allows that life to pour out through us. That's what he's talking about here. And it's not because we're big, we're not. And it's not because we're clever, we're not. And, it, and it's not because we have lots of resources, because we don't. But it's just because we are thirsty and we go to Jesus for the water of life. It's just because we are confused and we go to Jesus for truth. 
It's just because we can't see the road ahead, but we step out in faith and find every time that Jesus is the way. It's not about us, not about our size or capacity or strategy. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. That's all we need. That's all our community needs. So, may you keep walking. May you keep questioning. May you keep living abundantly. And may you keep meeting Jesus in every step, every thought, and every heartbeat. Amen.